with it. You gotta live over these things of God. He said, touch not the unclean things. We touch all kinds of stuff that terminate us. And then we want to all bring service unto the Lord. We offer up strange fire. You remember the sons? You remember the two sons? Aaron, two sons that offer up strange fire before the Lord. And God consumed them. Because they offered us stream fire. Yes. Church, we can't offer them a stream fire. Amen. Either you got it or you don't got it. Amen. And if you don't got it, you need it. Amen. That's it. Don't, don't, don't play with yourself. You don't have time to pretend. Because they got, I don't find out. Because I design. I, I pick Amen. up. I design. Heavy design. Y'all shouting and don't move me. Amen. I'm looking. What is using you? Amen. What is behind that shouting? Do you have a lifestyle? A stable lifestyle where you are stable. Where the pastor can a cone you can call you and you there. Where you stand before the Lord in prayer and in fasting. Most of us don't want to fast no more. Fasting condition your flesh. And a lot of us need to be conditioned. Fasting, retrain your mind. How to be steadfast in the things of God. When you fast, it's excel you spiritually. It's like fast track. Fasting and praying is like fast track. Until Daniel began to fast and pray. Daniel did not receive the revelation from the prophecy of Jeremiah. As the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 25 that Jeremiah prophesied the captivity of, of, of Jerusalem. That they'll be captive for 70 years. And Daniel came on the scene. And Daniel wanted to know the interpretation of the prophecy of Jeremiah. And the only way Daniel could have known it, he fast and he pray. And when he fast and he pray, there was spiritual warfare released in the heavens. Because that's what fast and praying do. Fast and praying shake everything that is not God. <coughs> it will reveal. And Daniel found out that there was a spirit of Persia was in the king that called Darius. And this king, this perjure, spirit of perjure was influencing this king. And the only way this the, the children of Israel is going to be delivered, this king got to be moved. And to move the king, you got to move the spirit, the principality. And the Bible says when Daniel began to pray, Daniel prayed until the archangel Michael was released. Amen. One of the chief angels. And the Bible said they war with the prince of Persia. <coughs> and so the prince of Persia has been moved. But now the prince of Greece, the Greece empire now, that we are dealing with right now. You see, fasting and praying, fasting and praying things of God will, will bring you in the mind of God. That God will be able to reveal things before it happens. I told the church that the spiritual world is where is really than the natural world. Yes, Amen. Because everything that is about to come to pass first happened in the realm of the spirit. That's right. And this is why this is why prayer is spiritual warfare. <coughs> Anytime you engage in prayer, you are literally engaging in spiritual warfare. Why do you think Paul says in, in, in Ephesians chapter 6 says, Amen. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power Amen. of his might, Amen. and putting on the whole armor. The reason why you got to put on armor because you are in a spiritual warfare. And you know, time to sit down because let me tell you something. The enemy is trying to take you out. Yes. Amen. Their assignment is to take you out. 
And this is why Paul says, put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. The word wiles means traps. The enemy is setting traps, hoping that you're going to fall victim to one. And that's why we got to keep prayer up, fast up, and word. You got to be in the word. You got to be in the word. Because prayer is not you mumbling some word that comes in your head. Prayer is you rehearsing what God already did. Amen. You enforcing his will to be done. That's why he told Isaiah. And Isaiah, amen, amen, 46. He says that declaring the end from the beginning. And the things of ancient time which have not yet been done says, says my conscience shall stand forever and I will do all of my pleasure. Amen. And then in verse 11 he says calling a man that execute the counsel of the Lord. So God needs you to execute his counsel. Prayer is executing the counsel of God. True prayer must be the basis of the word of God. If there's no word, there's no prayer. Amen. Because prayer must be, and it must be able to correspond with the word. Because whatever God binds in heaven, you can bind on the earth. And whatever God loose in heaven, then you can lose it. But you got to know what he lose. My Lord. You got to know what he buy. So we just don't go and pray. I buy up this. I buy up. No. That got to be the foundation that you standing on. When you buy up anything. John says in verse John 5. He says this is the confidence that we have in him. That we ask anything according to his will. And we know that he heard us. We know that we have the petition we desire of him. That's me standing on his will. <laughs> True prayer will cause the devil to react. If, if, if after you get your prayer and you can just go to the park and, and nothing nothing, you ain't pray. Because when you pray, you shake up the devil. You shake up the satanic world. And then they respond back. True prayer will, will deliberate people. Folks got to be liberated. That's why the devil don't like you when you start to pray. Because when you pray, God begins to save. You give God something to work with. You say, God, do it, do it, do it. But God need a, God said, hey, can, I, can I find a man that's going to stand in the gap to make up the ages? Lest I destroy the whole land. You remember in Ezekiel chapter 22? God sought for a man. He sought for a man. What can make God came down, come down and sought for man? Because God didn't want to destroy the nation. But if there's no intercession, God will destroy the land. So God, see, so when, when there's an intercession praying for the people, God will bring mercy. Do you remember Abraham prayed for Lord? Lot was in well, sort of, and God's about to destroy. And Abraham begins to reason with God. My God, my Lord, thank you. Come on, and because of Abraham's prayer, Lot was saved. Amen. So prayer can do, prayer can do a lot of mighty stuff. Prayer can do things that while you are sleeping, God may be working. Amen. Why you sleeping? God be working. Why? Because you give him something to do. You give him something to work out. Because you're praying. You're praying consistently. You're praying consistently. You're praying not based on religion. Religion not really based on religion, but based on re relationship. Because relationship is really relationship is is when you give up yourself for somebody else. Because you can't build up a relationship without communication. Amen. We're talking, I'm, I'm landing right now, and then I can call for prayer. 
a lot of us say we want a closer relationship with God. But in order to get a closer relationship with God, you got to build a you got to build a relationship yeah, with God. Do, do, do you know it is it is communication that that grows your love for a person? The more you communicate with a person, the more your love begin to grow. You see what I'm saying? So anytime you communicate with God, your love for God grows. Amen. When you talk to God every morning, every day, your love for God grows. And when your love for God grows, you become dedicated to God. And you will put him first. There's four levels of relationship that God made man, made us to partake in four levels. The first level relationship that God made us is to have a relationship with God. God amen. The second relationship is to have a relationship with the husband and his wife. The third relationship with the relationship with their children. The fourth relationship is friendship. If we get the relationship right with God, then the rest of the relationship will line up. Line right up. Amen. If we get the relationship right with God. Because the one that many of us in this church right now is out of relationship with God. Amen. You say right there looking at me funny, but you're out of your relationship with God. You know you're not where you should be. Jesus. And so we play. We got we see see nowadays we just cover. Yeah. <laughs> Take your mask off. Because God doesn't know you. God has seen you. 